Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today on the show, we're glad to know that you will be joining us. Uh, as I say good morning to you, I also wish to remind you that this is the um, Sickle Cell Awareness Month. And what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it in terms of marriage, in terms of uh, health care in terms of uh, empathy on those who have it and in terms of uh, whatever is needed to make sure our world is safe our world is better our world is cheerful and all that do you know a sickle cell person around you do you know someone who needs your help do you know someone who needs your encouragement and all that we're all in this and uh, we came to this life to be of help to one another and i hope that you're doing your beat in your neighborhood and anywhere you find yourself uh, today is the is uh, Thursday. Uh, the what day is it now? September the nineteenth. I always get my dates mixed up all the time, and I do hope that you're having a wonderful time. If you remember the rhymes when you were growing up in primary school, you know, thirty days of September, April, June, and November. That means that we have just eleven days to the end of this month, and then we will enter into the final quarter of the year so it's a great achievement that you made it this far as i welcome you to this to today's episode of the program let's just take a breather and when we return we'll give you a rundown of what we're going to be doing this morning Okay, like I said, uh, there are things that we're going to be discussing today. There is uh, controversy and confusion surrounding Yahya Belu's arrest by EFCC. Remember that the uh, Yahya's um, legal team talked about him showing up at the EFCC office and also that the EFCC said that that never happened. We also are going to be talking about uh, the Sickle Cell Awareness Month and uh, what we are hoping for and uh, what we need to change. Sickle Cell Awareness Month, the theme is Unite for Awareness, Hope and Change. Okay, so we'll be talking about that. We also will be looking at the headlines that made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies this morning. And then there are top trending issues that we'll want to discuss. And right away, let's go into those top trending issues uh, that we have this morning. The first top trending issue is that NIHSA has warned of flooding as Cameroon releases water from Lagdo Dam. We talked about this yesterday and we're, we cannot even say enough of this. The Nigerian Hydrological Services Agency, NIHSA, has confirmed that Cameroonian authorities have begun the release of water from Lagdo Dam. A statement issued earlier this week by the Director General of NIHSA, Umar Ibrahim Mohamed, explained that the authorities of Lagdo Dam in Cameroon have informed the agency that the dam management will begin regulated water releases at the rate of 100 um, millimeters from September 17, 2023. The water release is expected to increase gradually in the next seven days, depending on the inflow from the upstream Garua River, which is the main feeder into the reservoir and a major contributor to the Benue River. However, the dam managers further stated that the planned water releases will be gradual so as not to exceed the conveyance capacity of the Benue River system and cause major flooding downstream Nigeria. The agency hereby wishes to state that there is no cause for alarm as major flooding is not expected downstream Nigeria as the flow levels along the river Benue are still within the warning levels. Notwithstanding, it is highly imperative for all states that are contagious to the river Benue system, namely Adamawa, Taraba, Benue, Nasarawa, Kogi, Edo, Delta, Anambra, Bayelsa, Cross River, and rivers. The government at all levels, federal, state, and local governments, to set up vigilance and deploy adequate preparedness measures to reduce possible impacts of flooding that may occur as a result of an increase in flow levels of the major rivers at this period. The agency will continue to monitor, according to them, closely the flow situation of the transboundary river Benway and the national inland rivers and steadily provide regular updates on water levels across major rivers to flood disasters. Okay, uh, those, uh, that's what we said yesterday, that they, they, there's been this warning that the dam will be re will be opened and the water released. Um, it has already been opened. It's been promised that the, uh, 
uh, release of this water will be gradual so that it doesn't cause any harm. But be that as it may, like I said yesterday, what you need to do to prevent uh, uh, what we, we would say prevention is better than cure. Uh, so you, you have to do whatever it takes to prevent you crying tomorrow that because the water was released, there's been um, a flood here or there. They might release this water gradually and the rains might come and add to, the, to whatever water has been released and it will lead to flooding. Whatever the cause might be or the case may be, uh, know that there could be unforeseen circumstances. So be safe. That's what uh, the word word is. Be safe in the next few days and be sure that um, whatever can be put on hold should be put on hold. Whatever can be done to make sure that in case it floods, you can be safe, you do it. And whatever documents you have in your house, if your house is close to a place that it can flood and you know destroy your documents, carry them to safety or seal them in such a way that whether water comes in or not is going to be. I'm just saying, but things like this happen. You remember what has happened in Borno State and people, some houses were submerged. Even some story buildings were submerged. The zoo is no longer in existence because the animals have floated out. Uh, the criminals in the prison or the prisoners, let me not call them criminals, the prisoners uh, uh, also, they, I wouldn't say broke away because uh, they, the walls gave in on, the, on, the, on themselves. So I wouldn't expect them to stay there, no matter how good they might be. I wouldn't expect them to stay there and drown. So some of them ran away. Uh, some of them might be hardened criminals and they ran away. And we hope that Nigerian government will be able to recover them before they um, commit any more crimes in the society. You know. So whatever it is, take take caution, be, be prepared for unforeseen circumstances. That is what it is. But there's no need to panic. So long as uh, uh, everything goes according to plan, then there will be no flooding. That's what the uh, federal agency has told us. But like I said, prevention is better than quarrel, like my friend would say. Okay, the second thing is that uh, the Nigerian Geological Survey um, Agency, NGSA, has asked residents of the Federal Capital Territory not to panic over the air tremors currently being experienced. In a statement released, the Director General of the Agency, Professor Lucia Gumike, disclosed that NGSA monitored the tremors and found them to be low and did not pose any threat to the environment. The NGSA said its team also visited the affected areas for on-the-spot assessment of the events. From the accounts of the residents of the affected areas, the observations by the NGSA GSA team and findings from earlier interpretations of the airborne geophysical data over the area and adjoining areas, it said the following conclusions were made. That the tremors are a result of accumulated stress along the identified faults and released seismic energy which may have traveled through associated fractures to areas where the tremors were felt around the FCT. The intensities of the tremors are weak to light ranging from 3 to 4 on the modified Mercalli scale and pose a very low level of threat. The residents of Mpape, Katampe, Maitama and other areas where the tremors were felt are advised not to panic as the tremors can be generally described as low. The agency is keeping a close monitoring of the situation and will provide updates as many as may become necessary. It's still another case of prevention is better than cure. Whatever it is, uh, be safe. Um, when these tremors happen, I know for a fact that Nigerian buildings, or at least 90% of Nigerian buildings, are not built with the, uh, with the reasoning that one day there might be a tremor, one day there might be an earthquake, one day there might be whatever will, will, uh, will shake the ground. Uh, so they are just built like normal buildings. And if, if, this, if this happens, like yet it has happened now. I don't know the amount of buildings that have been weakened by this. So my, my take would be that whoever is living along those fault lines, along the places that, we, uh, that uh, these tremors were, were observed, uh, should check the buildings that they're living in. Uh, this is not saying you should panic. No, that's not what I mean. But I'm saying that that building may not have been built with that in mind, that there could be a a tremor, there could be uh, false movement, there could be seismic movement, or whatever grammar they were using, whatever big words they were using, 
So check your building well for integrity of that building and be sure uh, that it is still standing strong. If it is not standing strong, do what is needful before that building might collapse one day. When tremor happens, it's not just something that we can say, okay, uh, it has just happened, it's, it's mild. It's mild, yes, but it has given you the opportunity to fortify yourself. And that's what I, as a person, am advising, not as an expert, but I would do that if I were living in those areas that have been mentioned where uh, the tremors uh, occurred. According to reports, as the days went by, because it didn't happen one day, it happened in a number of days, and the first day was was very mild. The second day was a little bit more serious. The third day, like that, it, it, it was rising rather than going down. That's what it is. So what if it comes back uh, tomorrow and something like that happens again? So check the integrity of your building and make sure it is safe for everybody who is living there and then continue uh, with your normal uh, lives. And then listen carefully, uh, attentively, whenever there are updates from the experts uh, uh, that have that are, that are constituting the committee. I hope uh, that the, the federal government has set or the FCT agency has set. So they will be giving updates. Be sure to listen to the updates. Be sure to, uh, to be knowledgeable enough to do the needful when the time comes. Okay, uh, the final top trending issue I'd like to take this morning is that former military head of state, General Abdullah, Abdul Salami Abubakar, has warned that the economic hardship in Nigeria is getting out of control and he urged the government to act fast. The hardship in the land is getting out of control, he said, and his res residence or at his residence in Mina when he received the leadership of the Campaign for Democracy and Human Rights led by Abdullahi Mohamed Jabi. General Abdul Salami added that everybody is crying about this hardship and it seems to be getting out of control. People cannot afford three square meals. The issue of transportation, the hike in fuel, the hike in school fees for children and the lack of funds in everybody's pockets is making life difficult for everybody. Nigerians are suffering. The former military leader, however, disclosed that he belongs to a forum that had made recommendations to the federal government on the way out of the economic hardship in the land. And he said, and I quote, I would like to inform you that in some of the proposals we have given to the government on another platform, that giving palliatives is not the answer to the high prices of food and other items in the country. There is need for the government to flood and saturate the commun communities with food. Let the government buy food and sell it at lesser prices to the people so that people will try to buy some of these food items depending on their pockets or income. We have passed these recommendations to the government. We hope they will implement it. Uh, end of quote. So Abdul Salami Abubakar, former head of state, uh, has said this. Um, I hope that the government will think he's a man of integrity because whenever, whenever anybody says anything, it is, oh, you're opposition, you, you want to overthrow our president, you want to, you're, you're fighting our president, you're this and you're that. It is getting out of hand. People are talking. The international community is talking. People within Nigeria are talking. People are running away. Uh, some of them, not because they want to get out of this country, but some of them have said, it's better to brave the, the Sahara Desert, it's better to, to go to Libya, it's better to go to even countries that are war-torn countries than to stay in Nigeria. That's not a good thing. Some of us know only Nigeria. Some of us love Nigeria uh, to bits and we don't want to leave. Make life just meaningful for us to enjoy in our own country that we are first citizens and not second class citizens. We are first class citizens in our country and it is a very good thing to, to even wake up and think that you are so important. Just make life a little bit easier for us and that is all. Now, when we're talking about CNG, for instance, he, he talked about transportation. We talk about CNG. There's no monitoring in any way uh, that um, uh, people who have even converted their, their buses to CNG are still carrying the same fare as the people who are, who are using petrol. I understand that a kg of, uh, uh, of CNG is about 300 naira or so, maybe 250 or so, and that it's, it serves the same purpose as one liter could serve. 
uh, of petrol could serve. And so if this is the case, then it means that these buses should be very, very cheap. But these buses are charging the same fare as the buses that are using petrol. And that's because you can't even tell the difference until you enter the bus and maybe see the cylinder in there. And then you cannot say uh, because your bus is like this or like that. So what is the solution? Government promised us a lot of buses. We have not seen a lot, enough of these buses that will take us uh, not just within, within the state, I'm not talking only about Lagos, not just within any state, but interstate as well. So that if you want to travel, a lot of people live in Lagos, but their families are back home where they come from and they need to travel from time to time. They can't do that because the fares are so high. You can't fly on air because that one is very crazy. And then you can't go on land because apart from the fact that it's very, very uh, expensive, it is also dangerous. There are a lot of things that are happening in this country. And sometimes rebellion does not give notice. Rebellion does not give notice. So all these ones on the 1st of October, we are going to do this. On the 1st of August, we are going to do this. There might be a time there will be no notice. There will just be one trigger and we don't know where that can come from. So please, government, please, people who um, can speak to people to listen, people who have the power to make policies, people who are holding our destinies in their hands, more or less, even though we know that our destinies are in God's hands, but people who have been given that responsibility to take care of us, do something about it. Don't look at everything as from opposition. Don't look at everything as being political. Uh, sometimes past presidents will tell us that these are the things that need to be done. Maybe not because they were able to do those things by themselves, but because they didn't see them because they were in power. Now that they have left power, they can now see that those things were do so bad and they advise you. That's why we have parents, parents advising their kids. It's not because they were very good in their time, but because they made mistakes, they do not want their children to make as well. So it doesn't matter whether Obasanjo was the worst president we had on earth, whether um, Jonathan was the worst president we had on earth, whether whoever else was the worst president we had on earth, but they saw things, they have had experiences, and they have seen some of the mistakes that they made. So they have the, um, the experience and the right to say this thing should be done differently. Don't say when you were there, you were part of the problem and this and that. And then there are people who have never governed anybody, but they're seeing these things because sometimes it's easier to, uh, to point out mistakes when you are standing far. Just take, for instance, you're watching a football match and you can see Messi or Ronaldo making mistakes when you cannot play even half of what they do on the pitch. You can, you can be the coach from outside because you're seeing very glaringly things that should have been done to make sure that goal enters or uh, that tackle is done or something, but you're, you're outside. So when people talk, I think whoever is in government should just objectively look at the criticisms, should look at the complaints and see what can be done and then be humble enough to, to, to say sorry when you do wrong, be humble enough to retrace your steps when you see that your policy is not working, be humble enough to make the people know that you are truly a servant. And this is not just the president, this is not just the governor, uh, this is for everybody. The president is a citizen of Nigeria, so we're talking to citizens of Nigeria, including you and me, who are not very, we are not even close to the corridors of power. Everybody has to contribute. But the people who hold the law, the people who hold the resources, the people who hold everything that defines us as a people, should do the needful and not just return to old national anthem and give us a shwebi for, uh, for 1st of October and all that. We should take decisive action that would make people smile in Nigeria. Nigeria was a great country. It still can be a great country if we accept to do the right thing and then make sure there are consequences for bad behavior as well. Our country really is very hard, but it takes all of us to be able to make it better. Uh, well, let's uh, pause there for a while. Uh, when we return from this short break we are going to take, we'll be looking at the papers and hoping to make sense of uh, the headlines that made it to the front pages of the National Daily. Stay with us.